is a different series for me. I'll make 50 forecasts. If I tell the software to feed the different series for me, it will create for me a representation of historical data and also a representation of the future. So in, in red here, we have one possible curve that would come during the simulation. Get all these red curves together, we have an average in black here. So in average, you see there's a strong seasonal pattern going up and down. And most of the curves we simulate respect that. Of course, in the historical data, you have one or another uh, uh, cycle that was broken and it happens, sometimes it does. So you have a lot of volatility around the, 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 the seasonal trend, okay? You can also use this tool to run backtesting. So if I was backtesting, if I was using this model way back there, a few years back, I would have predicted more or less what actually happened with the blue curve here, okay? So I can use this tool to understand, run some backtesting, understand whether it fits the past. And then if you believe that the past is a good guide for the future, forecast that into the future, okay? So I could write it here in Excel now. And then I have my forecast. If you know I run the simulation, you get all these different possible scenarios for this variable. Uh, I'll do the same real quick here for the cost. You do have a, an interesting structure here for the cost. So trend is not an issue here, it seems. But when you tell the software to auto detect, it finds an additive, uh, a, a, sorry, a seasonality of, of 12 months or periods here. Okay. And it would also fit a series like that. So my forecast here will be around this seasonal factor that I saw in the past. Okay, so this will be my forecast. One of these red curves, as you see, there's a repetitive uh, seasonal factor where prices are, are, are high at every 12 steps. Okay, uh, of course we can do that one by one, but ideally we should get them all together and run what we call batch fit. So the software will calculate not only the best series for each, but we also correlate them, calculate if there's any correlation, of course, and correlate them as needed. So with a batch fit here, you get a report for each of the series, just like we had before. And then a summary accounting for uh, 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 the forecast you need. And I'm actually, I actually did something wrong. I need a longer forecast period. So let me just do that again. Get this over with. So batch fitting and I'll tell the software to make 50 steps ahead, to, to forecast 50 steps ahead. So here we have our summary. What I'll do now, I'll just say, look, my forecast is coming from the other page. And now I have a forecast for coming from that fit summary for the volume, for the cost, and for the price. Columns B, C, and D. Okay. Now, of course, my profitability or my result of the project is simply the, 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 the volume multiplied by the margin, by the price and cost, and this will be the output of my model. So now I'm ready to run my simulation, copy and paste. Now I'm ready to run my simulation. All the outputs are here. As you can see here, if I just throw some random numbers, I think I missed something. Oh, I forgot to put the auto detect button on. Sorry. I did a very poor fitting of things here. Just a second. Let me do the fitting again because I forgot to turn on the auto detect button. Here, auto detect. 50 steps. That's what I needed. So now, there we go. Now we have the trend for the volumes and, and the seasonalities all mapped out. That's what I needed. Let's write the model again. Like series fit summary. There we go. Now with a few clicks of the button, you do get your forecast of what the future volumes may be, what the costs may be, and what your selling price may be. Put them all together, you have here 
a measure of what your profitability may be in the future. Okay. Now, if you run the simulation, you'll be able to see how your profitability moves over into the future. A forecast of your profitability, you'll be able to assess whether profitabilities are positive or negative. There's a chance, for example, on this graph that your profitability in the next month will simply be negative, that you will run a negative cash flow for this specific month, for example. So you, know, you can now prepare for that. There's a 5% chance you'll see uh, losses and not profits on this next month. And if you gather all the time steps together, we can even create a chart to see how this would evolve over time. So on this chart, we're seeing the different months into our forecast and how likely is it that we're gonna see a positive or negative profitability each, each month, the average of each month, etc. Okay. So from data, it's very easy to come up with a model right away. Either use time series if things evolve over time or by using the traditional fit if we're talking about just one variable, a snapshot of the variable. Okay. We can also correlate.